Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Happy New Year. Again. Again. It's uh, how many times? I don't even remember how many. A lot. A lot. But it's never enough. And it will be more. Very soon. So thank you for being here in a fantastic place in the north of on the top of the hill of uh, Oslo yeah and a pleasure to have you here we are doing a small conversation for uh, black metal for twisted mind only yeah and well, how was the gig yesterday with street because you know we came here for that gig i know and, uh, no actually, a unique actually you came here for, for Uda. Uda. yes to be clear but uh, no, we had to take over for uh, Ural because of um, uh, yeah, personal stuff in, in, in that band, you know. Yes, we all know. Yeah. So um, she asked me, uh, Trish asked me, if we wanted to fill in the spot, you know. And uh, I asked the guy, and we all agreed it was a really bad idea, you know. <laughs> but our rehearsal place is uh, 50 meters across the, the venue, so we said, okay, let's just do a rehearsal. Let's just bring the gear over and uh, pretend it's a rehearsal, we, at least we get to test the sound, you know, and uh, test if we're on to something, you know. So, uh, yeah, we decided to do it, you know, and I think it met our expectations that, you know, uh, that uh, the problems uh, we knew would happen, would happen and stuff like that. Now we need the experience, basically. Yes. Well, my opinion, we already talked to yesterday, that the atmosphere that was supposed to be created was there. And I heard different people that were a bit skeptical. Yeah. Because you played uh, new material yeah. mostly. Yeah. It really got the message across to the people that attended the gig. And I was very satisfied. Although most of the songs were unknown. Yeah. But it was about the atmosphere and it felt like a rehearsal, like a start of a new time for street. You know, I, I really felt it uh, at certain points on the stage myself, you know, when when you kind of, you, you, you've multiplied your kind of part so many times that you're getting into a sort of a trance, you know? Yes. And, and that, that's what we are aiming for, you know? We, we didn't manage to do that for 45 minutes, but maybe we managed to do that for 25 minutes, you know? And, and uh, that that is our approach. That's what we're striving to be. You know? So for a for a first game, I think it's definitely an acceptable uh, result. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very happy I was there in front. Yeah, always as usual. Thank you. Are there? Um, so how will this project to be continued? Are we expecting more gigs to come? Yeah. Uh, are there? What us? What is the? expectations we can have in terms of the new album that was supposed to be released already for some time. Yeah. Can you tell something about it? We started working on a new album in 2010, yes. you know, yes. but uh, um, we had some uh, differences with uh, the engineers at that time and so we just had to abandon it and start again, you know. And then, yeah, I don't even know how many children later, you know, <laughs> now, now, we're, now we're stuck in a twilight zone of the life, you know. So. Uh, uh, but we have started the uh, recording again. Uh, we live far apart, me and uh, Edward yeah. Ram. Yeah. So uh, he needs to come to my place in order for us to work in the studio. You know. So um, so we, we try to do that as regularly as we can. But sometimes it, it takes a long time before we can get together. Yeah. And um, sometimes we manage to do it a couple of times a week. You know. You never know beforehand. You know? But that's the kind of project that Street has become as well. You know? it's, a, it's organic in that way. You know, it's not nothing planned. And, you know, you don't have this big promotional apparatus behind you. You know, it's like just a few guys making music as they always did you know similarly as in the, in the, in the 90s. 90s yes yeah. yes so we will find out when the album is released somewhere in the future probably never exactly that's what I was not expecting anything less so then you can keep the anticipation and we can keep having hope yeah. for something exactly. that will probably never, never happen. happen fantastic okay this is street and um, I'm now curious about your, the main band, Rudolf's yeah. band. Um, 
So can you tell me how I've heard that uh, one member left but is not in the band anymore, Lars? Yeah, he, he's uh, he's a hot way in the band. He, he doesn't want to tour anymore, he doesn't want to do shows and stuff like that, but he still wants to be a creative outlet in the band. So, so will he still work on the album that yeah. will come? Okay. Cool. I want him to play bass and, you know, um, I want him to contribute creatively as well, you know, he just uh, doesn't want to, to be on the road, you know, and uh, he has a family, he's, um, I, I guess out of the, all of us, uh, not only that I'm playing in Dörrensgar now, but has been through all the history, he's the only normal guy that's ever been in the band. That's unique. That's unique. So he's so, the most... So I understand why he doesn't want to play live, yeah. because he will get also... <laughs> you know, you, you meet a lot of things on the road, you know, all of them are not attractive, you know, it's a shitty condition, you know, you have to love it, you have to live it, you have to eat it, you have to be kind of part of it uh, to understand what's attractive with the road, you know, yeah. I think you have to be a free spirit to begin with, you know, yeah. with Lars, he's a, he's a family man, he's, he's a very stable tight, guy, stable, tidy guy, you know? yeah. For him, when people are coming in the bus with the bags of drugs, it doesn't work for them. But it does work for the rest. You know, <laughs> people can do whatever they want. Of course. Of I don't care, you know. Yeah, sure. People are free to live their lives how they seem fit. So how is, how is it going to work for the live performances? Will he be replaced with a session bus player? Yeah, probably uh, get, get in somebody else, yeah. Uh, I haven't really okay. given it much, much thought because now... Um, Seeing that uh, the live band kind of met its demise because Lars was such a big part of, of uh, the Duran style for the last few years. You know? yeah. So I went back and concentrated on the studio. Part of it. Now I'm just focused in on making a new album. album. And then we will see what the live performance will yeah. be. What will develop out, out of it. it. So can you tell me something about the new album? How far is it in the process to be... Uh, Complete. You and know, I make music all the time. You know, so I have, I don't know, 60 songs maybe. You know, and uh, maybe all of them are going to be included on the next Dora. Oh, that will be a big album. Or maybe none of them. You yeah. Know? I don't know. I just make music. We will see what fit. It has to correspond. You know, after Super Villain Outcast, I made a Super Villain Outcast too, and I listened to it. I listened to about 30 songs that I have made pre-productions too and I thought no I've been down this road yeah this is a road you know this is just a memory going in loop all the time so I threw out all those songs and I started again and the rest of what Aumbra Omega mm -hmm. and of course I would never come to Aumbra Omega without, without doing the mistake yeah. of being stuck in a loop so maybe I'm stuck in a loop now as well you know where I'm trying to find the right sound that's correlating kind of with the thoughts and the emotion I want to portray. Because you always need to have something to say. You yes. Know? If it's only going to be stale music, then it's not that interesting. No. Look at it, you know. Today, people are going to Halloween parties with corpse paint. <laughs> what the fuck, you know? That, that, that's how much our art has diminished. Yeah. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah, so Umbra Mega was released in 2015 and uh, we are now almost four years later. So yeah. that's why people start to ask themselves, yeah, when can we expect something new? So you can't say really a date or a year or whatever. Okay. No, I have other bands that work more in that way. You know? Yeah. Like, uh, I think now it took eight years bef between 66 and, and uh, Supervillain and then another eight years for Umbra Mega. Uh, Umbra Mega. So I don't really care. This, this should be a creative art. I see people... Uh, release every year standard album. No, no. Oh, that's not going. They can do whatever they want. Sure, I don't sure. care. But I see on my Facebook page with the Zerlan Spark, people are quitting to like the band all the time. Really? Yeah, dislikes. You're getting dislikes. I love it. It's the best. It's, the way it's to better do it. to have dislikes than indifference. It is, you know. Because you are important Top in a score, way. lowest score, the best. It's all or nothing. All or nothing. There is nothing in between. Yeah. Fantastic. Live dangerous. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so any plans for some uh, 
gigs of Dudem's Guard uh, this year. Uh, I heard there was something like planned for a, to a gig in Greece. Uh, is that still uh, applicable or? I, I, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm going to pick it all up again, you know, uh, after a long hiatus, um, just making music. And we'll see what develops what from there. We, we get up with wars all the time, uh, shows and, and festivals. So it's no, no shortage of uh, demand. Yeah. But it's we'll not. see what feels right. I also want to make product right, you know. I don't only want to go up on a stage and do the same thing, I, you know, like a rerun or stuck in a new loop or whatever. You know? mm -hmm. So it's it's. Um, it must be something quite unique. Yes, yeah. has been all the time. It has to be some sort of a development, a progression know? from the previous. One. And that's what I personally think. From the first album till Ombre Omega, each album sounds exactly different. Yeah. There is no album that I can compare from one to the other one. So it's great uh, because for me personally, Ombre Omega has been the highlights of Dudem's Guard in terms of... Thank you! And I remember talking with you the first time... I didn't like it! Yeah. And I'm not afraid to say that to you, because I'm honest and I didn't get it. And it's the same with Emperor, for example, it's yes. another thing that I, people get in front of it. Some peop, some albums need to be, get synced in at the right time. You know, and, that, um, that was the, the whole kind of approach to it, you know? Mm -hmm. If you don't spend enough time on the album, you won't like it. It's because a, I don't want you to like it immediately. No, yes. because this is not pop music. Yeah. It's not something you can trade out after three months to buy the new single, yeah. you know? Yeah. You have to spend your time oh, yeah, did. getting into it, and then it will be your friend for life. You know? I think this is my friend for life. Well, it's even inked for life on my skin, yeah, so that says quite a lot. Its album is fantastic, Thank so you. it will be very difficult to find something that will exceed that, but I think you will still be able to surprise us with something completely different yeah. in a way. So, uh, but you know, my expectation isn't to exceed anything. You know? No, it's to be so, different. Yeah, to you know, progress. like now this album is 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 there, you know, and it has all these variation and themes and stuff like that. That doesn't mean I have to like, talk it. No. I will end up becoming a clown, you know, with a red nose. You know, if I'm always going to outdo kind of what I did before. So maybe now it's it's time for a different kind of. A Approach, you know? It depends on um, what do you want to convey this time. You know? Like when I made a Umbra Omega musically, it was a really, really chaotic time in my life. You know, so the the chaos in the life it kind of reflects on the, music. Of the album. You know, oh, yes. that's why the arrangements are as they are. You know, and they have those really uh, dark and, and uh, uh, depressing themes, and then you have the aggression and all that stuff. You know, which was all uh, boiling. You know, beneath the surface at the time. You know? Yeah, for me personally, what I think after I got into the album is like it's a mental trip from the first song till the last one. It's, uh, it's. I see it as a concept album in a way. It's a concept album, and I think this album will has to be played once entirely. I would like to. Uh, I know that there is been talking about that, yeah. and uh, I really hope that it will, it will come reality someday. Yes. With the lineup of that album, of course. Of course. Of course. Is there a. Of course, it's a different question, but is there some kind like this, an album you feel more related to in the whole discography, or is there a preferred album? For me, it's the most honest album. You know? Um, Umbra Mega. Yeah, of course. You always told me that. Yeah. You know, when, when you start with music, you're kind of attached to a niche, you know? And I love being part of that niche, you know? I was one of the, you know, early second generation black metal people, you know? Mm -hmm. But it all was fresh and new. The only guys that ex uh, you, uh, preceded me was uh, the Ace Dines and the Negro Richards and, and all those guys, you know? So I, I'm proud of having that part in history. But you, in the beginning, you pay your dues. You pay your dues to the industry, you pay your dues to the scene that kind of made you, uh, made a part for you, you know? So that's why you have Chronic Kronia and Monumental Possession. It's uh, Dirt Iron Square paying its dues you know, yes. to the black metal scene. And on Monumental Possession you also have the trash influences and stuff like that, which uh, are so integral to our upbringing, you know? We listened mm -hmm. to trash metal when we were nine, ten years old, you know? Yes. And still do to this day, you yes. know? So, 
Krishna was paying our dues, and then Satanic art came. You know? and that was the start of the change. Yeah. I think if you would have continued with Cronet from the start, you would have probably gained more fans. I think. In a lot bigger band today. And yeah. a bigger league like, event. But you were honest and you tried to just do something different and to you go know, to, a, to your path. If I still did the Cronet to Cronet stuff, you know, 25 years later, and I was sitting in some shabby backstage somewhere still putting up my makeup like it, in, yeah like in my I would be fucking I would fucking kill myself <laughs> it's not the same everything is tied there is to, evolution it's tied to a period yes. everything is tied to a period you know when we were kids in 1991 I'm not saying this is a big deal but the, me and my um, friend we live yeah, maybe a few five houses from each other. We used to dress up, you know, in a lot of spikes and chains and cord spin, and we used to sit uh, uh, be, uh, beside the road, you know, where the cars were driving by and measure their express, uh, expressions, you know, because that's how much we kind of uh, felt for uh, kind of changing people's mindset of what is a reality back in that, that day, you know. Yeah. Like, because it was never seen before, you know, yeah. ghosts beside the road. And that's what it really represented at that time as well. It was a cultural revolt, you know. Mm -hmm. We don't like uh, your MTV, we don't like your fucking Christian dogmatic upbringing, what's politically correct and all that, you know. So we took the role of the outcast in the schoolyard. We got beaten up every day, but then we took it and we ate it, we drank it. And you digest it. We were proud of it. Yes. Being the outcast. You know? So, you know, you're brought up in this small, shitty place in Norway, and, and they're telling you to be ashamed, you know? And you're saying, fuck off, you know? <laughs> You'd be fucking ashamed. you like everybody else. Yeah. Crazy. Good times. Yes, absolutely. It was, a, it was a purpose to it all, you know? It wasn't only about music. It was a lifestyle. It was a lifestyle. And the most important thing, it was an unaccepted lifestyle. Yes. You know? Your mother didn't like it. Yeah, I know. Good. I know. Your grandmother, good. You know? Nobody. Your teacher hated it. You know? I had the same problems in uh, Italy when I was long hair, earrings in the 80s, listening, uh, having uh, metal shirts. I was hated by everybody. Yeah. I didn't care. And 30 years later, I'm still uh, listening to extreme music. Yeah. While my grandfather told me, I know when you will be old, you will not listen to this crap anymore. You will. But you are old and you're still Very old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So, yeah. So, any other things uh, you're working currently, except of uh, Street and Doodles Guard? Are there other projects you're actively involved with right now? Yeah, I'm doing a project with uh, Hovard from uh, Go Old Ulve lineup. The lineup from, from Ulve. Ulve. Yeah, yeah. Ulve. Yeah. Um, the, the black metal stuff and the acoustic stuff, and, and we're doing a project. The interesting part with him. So, is it more electronic now, or is it more really going back to the first Ulve? That, that's the interesting part with Hovard is that you know he quit music 15, 16, 17 years ago, ago, you know, yeah. and he put the, put everything on the shelf. And when he picked up again, he started exactly where he left off. So I think his music uh, musical approach is a really genuine in relation to the early 90s. You know, obviously he's a better musician now. Obviously also the. Uh, the production values are better and all that, but it still has the same atmosphere. Yeah. Because it's still in that mindset. In between, it's just a void. It's a black, empty space. You know? So, um, we're doing an EP uh, that's going to be out on Soul Soul, you know, Norwegian lyrics. Um, and, you know, early early type of uh, black metal. The, the really cool stuff about the old bands in the 90s is that, yeah, you can say they were all black metal, but they were all original. So we're still trying to take care of that uh, element of it all as well. You know, that, yes, you will recognize this. If it's in your bones, if it's in your blood, you know, you will uh, probably enjoy it. You will probably enjoy it, and it will trigger your memory and your emotions in some way. But it also has that original element, you know, 
that bands at that era had. You know, you had Ulver, you had Chris singing, you know. You, you had Immortal with the Furious Speed, you had Name with the legend around them, you know. You had Burson with the fantastic atmospheres, you know. And then, you know, all these bands were entirely unique. Yeah. So we also tried to have that coach. Cool. Um, apart from that, what are you musically listening in your free time? Is it only metal? I suppose you're very more versatile. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think people, people want to know <laughs> what I'm listening to. But you let you're probably listening to. Yeah, more sure, stuff. sure. I'm open for all kinds of Every music. Kind of you know, music. like uh, uh, music's purpose is to be evocative. Because if you can cre create emotion, you can create thought, you know? Yep. So it has to... Uh, it comes from inside, actually. Yeah, it has to derive some, from somewhere, you know? So uh, evocative music, it makes you think, basically. So I don't care which genre it is. It, it, if I'm touched by it, you know? If it makes me cry, laugh, whatever, you know? Then it's, it's kind of fulfilled its function. Yeah, I'm asking you this just as a provocation in a way, but you know, there's people playing this music for 30 years and they're still only stuck to listen to black metal and they're not open for anything else. That's their that, prerogative. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's all right, you know. Um, and you know, being stuck in this scene that I love, that I've been part of for so many years, um, we also uh, lost a lot of fans because of it, you know. That some people are just not open, you know. As soon as there is a synthesized drum on the record, they automatically don't like it. Because it's not true enough. Yeah, it's not true. Enough. Yes, I know. But that's their prerogative, you know. Yeah. I, I can't focus in on that, you know. No. I just have, have to focus in what. Uh, it's, it's kind of a life story, you know. Mm -hmm. You have your. Uh, you have your early beginnings, your demos, then your album, then your progression, you know. Sure. And at some point I'm going to die, you know, and I'll be in the ground. And this will be my legacy, you know. Absolutely. And it will all be in there, both lyrically and musically. You will be able to um, escalate, you know. Yes. If you're interested, you can do it. You can hear what genres they're packed into the music. What I, I do in you know, if it's 80s pop music, metal, you know, trash metal, whatever. You know, it's all there, you know. How do you see in the, the current scene in Norway or maybe in the Oslo scene, do you think there are interesting bands uh, nowadays or are you following that yourself? Yeah. yeah, a lot of good bands. I try to listen to uh, of music, like uh, the conversation we had in the car, you know. Yes. Sometimes I go to the office and I look really busy behind the... Behind You're the busy keyboard. with other things except the work. Yeah. Fantastic. And then I listen to uh, new bands. I try to find new bands. But I think it's it's a different scene right now because people are more business oriented. People really want to break it or make it, you know. Like when we put, uh, <laughs> put on the corpse paint in the early days, we wanted to be hated. We wanted you to be absolutely disgusted. You wanted to shock. Yeah. Now people put it on to be liked, you know. Yeah. So it, it, you know, it, we are in a like generation right yeah. now. So it, yeah. the whole thing is changed. So I will say it like this, you know. I'm I'm a part of this scene, but I'm not really a big part of it anymore. I'm part of what happened in the 90s. Yes. That's my part, you know. I agree with that. And, uh, and I'm, I'm content with that, you know, and uh, now it's it's a new generation of people growing up, you know, they have to do what the fuck they want, and hopefully they take care of it, you know, yes. and they still, um, and they're not only thinking about the, the alcohol and the women and the money and all that stuff, but also are honing in on the most important thing of it all, our legacy, you know, yes. where did it come from? Where did it stem from? What did it mean? What was the motivation? Exactly. Thank you. Any more things you want to uh, tell yourself? Uh, tell myself? Yeah, I mean, uh, something you want to say uh, that people might hey. find interesting. Hey, yourself. How are you? <laughs> oh, no. It's all right. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being too. Always Thanks a, a lot, pleasure, mate. pleasure to see you. Uh, pleasure is all mine. Yeah. And uh, thank you a lot. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, we will see you each other very soon. Very you soon. Know that. We will not reveal why. Why? It's a, a mystery. But it's something special. Yeah, something special. Okay, thanks a lot, bro. Cheers, bro. How long? Uh, 23 minutes. Oh, fucking long, man. It was long. My arms are almost falling off. Sorry, mate. I did the